Hey everybody, welcome to the Padawan YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a peek at the question, what is a Mandalorian? So if you're relatively new to the Star Wars universe and find yourself asking this question, or if you're a canon buff just looking to touch up your history, stick around and learn more. So what is a Mandalorian? Mandalorians were a people, a culture in the Star Wars galaxy. Uh, they hail from a region in space called the Mandalore Sector, uh, Mandalore being the main planet with its moon Concordia. While mostly depicted as humans throughout canon, it's important to remember that Mandalorians weren't specifically a race, so it wouldn't be surprising to see a Mandalorian that was a non-human. They have a long history of being a warrior culture, and even gained notoriety in the galaxy for being able to take on Jedi. And that brings us to really one of the most important features of the Mandalorian, their armor specifically their helmet. The T-shaped visor is their trademark and known across the galaxy. You can see it in The Mandalorian on Disney Plus that people immediately know he's a Mandalorian just by seeing the helmet. Important side note here is that most people will immediately think of Jango Fett from the prequels and his son Boba from the original trilogy. Jango claimed to be a Mandalorian but Mandalore said that he was lying and stole the armor. So while those are the, probably the first two that you think of because those are the main ones that come up in canon, they're actually not Mandalorians. So while their main identifier may be the helmet and the T-shaped visor, their main offensive weapons come from the van braces they wear on their wrists. They were loaded with all kinds of different technology built up over the years of fighting Jedi, like flamethrowers, wrist lasers, wrist rockets, grappling hooks, and paralyzing darts. These could be seen used in the show multiple times in fights that the Mandalorian is in. The last important piece about their armor is that it's traditionally made with Beskar steel. We see it in the show when the Imperial gives him the block of it and he's able to make a pauldron. This is very important to their culture and it'll be interesting to see how they play this out throughout the episodes. It is also important to note as we take a look at their history some of the famous families. As in The Mandalorian, the armorer mentions specifically if his signet's been shown. This could reveal a lot later in the show in what family he may be uh, a part of. They usually went by clans. Some of the famous ones are Visla, Kreis, Ren, Saxon, Rook, and Eldar. They all use different colors and symbols or signets to identify their armor. So it should be interesting to see what they end up doing with The Mandalorian. So now let's jump right into about the last 50 years of history leading up to the Mandalorian show so that we can set the table for what's going on here. So back in the Clone Wars, a new movement called the New Mandalorians, led by Duchess Satine Cries from the uh, House Cries, which was one of the, the famous houses that we listed earlier. So keep in mind that name. She was the leader of the New Mandalorians, and really what they were trying to do is get away from their warrior past. Um, they were trying to become a more peaceful planet. They were neutral in the Clone Wars, um, so not on the side of the Separatists or the Republic, so they were trying to get their own kind of uh, their own stuff in order. Um, what they did is they kind of cast out the warriors, um, and I'm going to just quickly go over. The warriors were cast out to uh, different planets and, and different moons, and they basically formed this thing called Death Watch to bring back the, the warrior ways of the, of, of the culture. Um they ran a lot of kind of terrorist uh, attacks on Mandalore and on the new Mandalorians to try to get intervention from the Separatists and the and the Republic um, to kind of win, win back the support of the people and show that, you know, um, the, the warrior way was needed. Um, they go through a lot of it, iterations. Um, the main leader for most of this is a guy named Pre Vizsla from House Vizsla, another famous family to keep in mind. Um, they get involved with uh, Darth Maul's Shadow Collective, and basically, uh, with Darth Maul, they overthrow uh, Duchess Satine and the New Mandalorians, um, and and take kind of take over Mandalore. Um, at this time, actually, Darth Maul kills Visla, and this creates uh, uh, segmentation in the Death Watch. Um, one of the the main Death Watch people is Bo-Katan Cries, who is Satine's sister. So Bo-Katan isn't into to Maul leading, and he puts another kind of figurehead in charge. Um, Almac was his name. And so Bo-Katan's not into that. So she was some of the under, other Death Watch Mandalorians split away, and they refused to follow Maul um, and, and the puppet leader he put in charge. So they go, and at this time, Obi-Wan is, um, 
is is captured on Mandalore. So they free him and and eventually get him to get help from the Republic um, to, to come help out. Long story short, um, the Republic comes in in the Siege of Mandalore, basically gets Maul out, and Bo-Katan is put in charge, and she is known as the Mandalore. That was kind of the before the 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 term for the leader of all of mandal of, of all the mandalorians unfortunately her rule was short-lived as this is right around order 66 so obviously then the republic turns into the empire and the empire wants the loyalty from mandalore and she refuses to give it so they basically overthrow her and put uh, another famous family the clan saxon is put in charge um, so right now to this point we want to keep in mind the cries family the vislas and Clan Saxon. We get um, many years of Clan Saxon in control, okay? And now we're right before A New Hope. Clan Wren is another another big one. Um, they they have a daughter who's off with the, the rebellion. Um, she was kind of cast off for, for a bunch of different reasons. You should check out Rebels. Um, but she finds the Darksaber. Um, it's a lightsaber that was made by um, Tar Vizsla, way 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 back in the day it kind of represents man the mandalorians and and so it was a big symbol for them so she finds it it's been gone for years um since pre vizsla had it at first and that was kind of his pitch to get back in charge before maul kills him so this is found it's brought back um and and ren really wanted to bring it back to they were under clan saxon so they bring it back to to saxon but he kind of turns on him so anyways a battle ensues and um and they they kill they kill Gar Saxon, so it really sends everything into uh, a civil war because Clan Saxon's still in charge at this time because they're backed by the Empire, but now a lot of the Mandalorian clans and houses are 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 backing Ren, um, Clan Ren, because they just don't like they they don't want to be ruled by the Empire, which is which is common. I mean, Mandalore wants to rule itself. That's an important part of 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 their culture. So a civil war breaks out, and basically the clans unite. Um, and they, and they find Bo-Katan and they, and they really unite under Bo-Katan, um, and, and get rid of, get rid of Clan Saxon. They win, they get the empire out of there and then they give the dark saber to Bo, Bo, Bo-Katan again. And she becomes Mandalore from then on in. That's really the last recorded history in Canon that we have that Bo-Katan was in charge and she was going to go about helping heal a lot of the fractured wounds that, the Empire had left, that de- the Death Watch had left, and get and get Mandalore back back and strong. So that's gonna bring us really to where we are in the Mandalorian. You know, that was that was basically nine years before the Mandalorian starts. Um, so Mandalore's had a chance to heal under Bo Katan. It'll be interesting if Bo Katan is in the show. Um, and and now the, the you know the Empire's been wiped out and now we're under new Republic law. Um, so that's where we are. Hope that explains and gets you caught up if you were following along the whole time in canon. Or if you're new, hopefully that gives you a little background to make the Mandalorian make a little more sense. And you'll and you'll catch some things, especially when his signet's revealed. And hopefully when they talk a little bit more about the culture and what's happened in those nine years. So that's it for me. Have a great day. Appreciate you listening.